Okay, so now let's start off with project inequality. So of course, in E math, you all learn inequality. So in A math, you have this quadratic inequality. Okay, so how am I going to do quadratic inequality? Let's start off with the first one first. Huh? So x squared less than 8x minus 5 over 3. So every time you want to solve so-called equation or inequality, you make sure that it's both sides single fraction. So this case, I will put over 1. Okay, the one thing about inequality is when you cross multiply, okay, make sure that the top, the left-hand side numerator is on the left. It means that 3 times x squared must be on the left-hand side. Okay, then this one will be 8x minus 5. For equation, right, it doesn't matter if you put 3x squared equals to 8x minus 5 or you put 8x minus 5 equals to 3x squared. For equation, it doesn't matter because left equals to right, right equals to left is the same meaning. Ma. But for inequality, because there's a mouth thing, less than and greater than is two different meanings. That is why you have to make sure, the first thing you need to make sure is this must be on the left-hand side. Okay? Next is, of course, this one bring left, bring right, very straightforward. So this one will be 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 less than 0. And then after that, make sure this left-hand side is a quadratic inequality, right? So what you need to do is you need to... Oh, hold on. Huh? Okay. So, yeah, calculator. So, I need to do the cross method, right? So, 3 minus 8 and plus and 5. So, when we factorize this, it will be 3x minus 5 and x minus 1, less than 0. So, what you do is must make sure uh, for general equality, you need to draw this thing. Okay? And then after that, uh, you will get this one, you get 1. This one, you get 5 over 3. So, this one will be 1. This will be 5 over 3. When it's less than 0, it's below the horizontal line. So if it's in this region, it means that your x is between 1 and 5 over 3. Okay, so just to let you know, if here got equal, then this one simply just put equal. Okay, but if it doesn't have, then it doesn't have. Huh? So that's for the first question. Huh? See, okay, so now you see I'm done with the first part, right? Then you can take a snap. Huh? So I'm going to just rainbow it out first. So I will get 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'll go very fast. Huh? You all both take A math 1. I assume those simple algebra, I will not explain too much. Huh? Okay, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 24 equal, sorry, not equal, more than, more than 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. So I will have 3x squared minus 6x plus 3 plus 24 more than 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. If you have spot mistake, you also can put in the chat group. Huh? Sometimes uh, teacher Kenji haven't wake up. Huh? Maybe uh, do some mental calculation error. Huh? So after that, bring everything to the left-hand side. So 3x squared minus 2x squared minus 6x minus 4x. This one will be plus 27 minus 2 more than 0. So I have x squared minus 10x plus 25 more than 0. Then again, you factorize 1 minus 10 and 25. So I have x minus 5. So you see, this is the repeated one. Huh? So this is both is x minus 5. This is a special case. Huh? So you see, when it's only one number, then how? Because usually what you draw is drawn like that, correct? Huh? Whereby you have two numbers. But if there's only one number, okay? What you do is, it will not be this way. It will be just one, which is five here. More than zero, you are supposed to shake upstairs. If it's a usual one, more than is shake here, right? So in this case, do you agree that I shake here? So if I shake here, what does it mean? It means that actually I want all any real values except five because there's no equal mark. Okay, that's why the answer is. Any real number except five. And okay, if uh, this question got equal. So that means five is included, right? So if in such situation, you will say it's all any real numbers, even five are included. You understand? But of course, for this case, there's no equal. So that means it's all the real numbers except five. Uh. So this is for the part two.
So this one, you can see that it is simultaneous inequality. That means there's two sides. Huh? So we will do 2x minus 1, x squared minus 4, one side. The other side, x squared minus 4, less than 12. So I'm going to solve this one. So I'm going to bring ah, this one. You see, yeah, if I bring everything to the left-hand side, I get minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 4. Then I get minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, then do you notice that minus x squared is supposed to be a set face, right? So if it's a set face, a lot of students say, ah, okay, now that I draw like that instead of the usual happy face. No, okay, don't do that. Okay, in my quadrant inequality, I want all to be a happy face. That means I want all to be this way. So in order to have it in happy face, very straightforward, what you do is, okay, this is set face, ma. So you make it happy. So how do you make it happy? Okay, you multiply by negative one throughout. Okay, so it becomes x squared minus 2x minus 3. Then when you multiply by negative for inequality, the mouth change. So now become this direction. So now you see, I make it into happy face already. Okay, then the only thing you need to change is the mouth, right? And of course the sign. Ah, Then after that, you can factorize as per normal. So 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So I get x minus 3. I get x plus 1. This one. Then this one, I can happily draw the happy face. Then I have negative 1 and 3. So minus 1 and 3. More than 0 means shade this direction. So that means my range will be x is less than or equal to minus 1 or x is more than or more than equals to 3. Okay? But we are not done yet. Huh? This is only the range for this one. Don't forget that we still have a second inequality that we need to solve. So let's come to here. This is x squared minus 4. Did I forget to put x? Or is it just like that? Wait, huh? let me check something first. So it's minus, minus 12 less than 0. So x squared is uh, minus 16 less than 0. Okay, then this, a lot of students jam there. Huh? When it's two, two terms, how do you uh, solve so-called the quadratic? This one is using the a squared minus b squared. Huh? Because we know a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b, a minus b. So this will be x plus 4 and x minus 4. So draw this, I will have minus 4 and 4, less than 0 means this direction. So that means it's x is between negative 4 and 4. Okay, now I have this range. Huh? You're supposed to find the final range that uh, fulfill for both. So I will always draw the number line. So let's draw for this one. So I have four numbers that I need to put in. I have minus 4, I have minus 1, I have 3, I have 4. Okay, the, it's, I just need the four numbers. The scale is not important. Huh? So this one, x is less than negative 1. I shall use red color. So this one represents shaded and this direction. And this one is this direction. Then I will use the blue color to represent this one. We will draw it on the second level. So this one is negative 4 unshaded and the 4 this direction. So you draw So you draw both inequality on the number line. Then you see which region got double line. So this region and this region got double line. So this is the... A range which fulfill for both inequality. So in the end, my answer will be, oh, so x is between minus 4 and minus 1. You can see that this one got no underline because this one is unshaded. This one got shaded. That's why it says equal here. And then this one is x is or x is between 3 and 4. That's why my answer is this. Huh? This one and this one. So this one is the answer. This is for part three. So part three is a simultaneous inequality. You do them separately. It has its own range. Then you combine it into the number line, draw it at the level one, level two, find the common region, and that will be the range you want. Okay, that's for part three. Huh? So in this question one, I cover a few things, right? I cover all the blind spots already. I always tell my students. Huh? First, just now I mentioned, uh, First of all, when you have a minus, okay, when you have minus, make it happy face by multiply by negative one. So that's one issue that a lot of students always face. Huh? They don't know what to do when they see the minus. They draw the sad face. Okay, don't. I always draw happy face. Huh? Next is, I also have this kind. If it's x squared minus 16, then what do you do? You use the a squared minus b squared. Okay, and then when it's a simultaneous inequality, what do you do? You do the same thing, just draw them on the number line, find the common region. Right, and just now I also had my mission one thing is, make sure that your uh, over one, the left hand side numerator is always on the left hand side. So I already covered all those things that you will make sure that you will not have make mistake. 
Okay, then everything else well covered for gender equality is nothing much. Okay, so this is just the question one. Huh? So let's proceed. Okay, next, find the range of values of M for which the equation has two real and distinct roots. Okay, so uh, this is like, okay, this is the equation. M plus 2x squared minus 2mx plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, I will touch a bit on the, you have, okay, for A math is, actually once you understand the concept, A math is actually an easy topic. Okay, because they always just change the number. The concept is always the same. But the thing is, for A math, you really have to understand what you're doing. Okay, so let me explain about quadratic equation. So back to some, uh, you know, like E math, you only need to solve quadratic equation, right? AX squared plus BX plus C equals to zero. Okay, and then after that, what do you do? Then, uh, of course, sometimes can use cross method using factorization to solve, right? Then sometimes use the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula is X will be equals to minus B plus minus B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Then you will see that if you notice over here, this is what we call the discriminant. Okay, the value of the discriminant determine a lot of things. So I'm going to cover the basic. Huh? Okay, discriminant. This one, if you recall back and when you're using this formula, when your discriminant is a positive number, you square root a positive, you will have plus minus. So you will have two values, right? That's why when discriminant more than zero, you will have two real and distinct roots. Okay? And when your discriminant is equal to zero, you just imagine when you square root zero. Square root zero gives just zero. When you plus zero minus zero, it means that you get only one value, ma. That's why discriminant equals to zero, you have two real and equal roots. And when you have discriminant less than zero, okay, take note, the common, common mistake that Sudan always write is, they say discriminant less than zero, they say no roots. But you are wrong. Huh? There is roots, it's just that it is not real. Okay, So you will say no real roots. Because you cannot square root negative one. Correct now. Technically speaking, you cannot square root negative in your O level secondary school syllabus because we never learn complex number. Okay, there is such thing as called imaginary number or not real numbers. Okay, that is in uh, JC. I know you all will learn engineering. Also, will learn complex number, but in secondary school you don't learn that. So you for now you only need to know that there is roots, but it's not real. That's why we have to say it's no real roots. Okay. So then after that you have a situation whereby you combine. These two, how do you combine? When the question say, uh, it has real roots, okay? They tell you that the equation has real roots, but they never tell you whether is it distinct or equal roots. So it's very, very ambiguous, right? Very not clear, right? Then in that case, this is a special case. This, you will say that, oh, my discriminant is more than or equals to zero. You understand? So technically speaking, you only have four situations. More than, equal, less than, or you combine become more than equals to zero. Okay, that, take note that there's no such thing as this one. Huh? No such thing. Huh? Why? Because less than already represent no real roots. So how can it have real roots? It's impossible to combine these two together. Huh? Because some students ask me this question. So in case you have such a question, I'm going to tell you that there's no such thing. Okay, so you only have four situations. So then you think back. Okay, EMF, when you solve quadratic equation, Analyzing the, this b squared minus 4ac, I will know my personality, the nature of my roots. Then you come back to here. In A math, is, you are using this property to solve unknown. So they are telling you this is the quadratic equation, equation. And if you notice, the A for this case is m plus 2. The B for this case is minus 2m. The C is 1. Right? Then they tell you, oh, okay. They tell me this equation has two real and distinct roots. Then you will say that, Two real and distinct, then I will know all oh, my discriminant is more than zero. So I based on discriminant more than zero, I find out what's the range of M that fulfill this condition. So my discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. So you'll take B squared, B squared minus 4AC, more than zero. Okay, so let's open up. So this will be 4M squared minus 4m uh, minus 8. Okay, more than 0. I can divide by 4 throughout. Okay, m squared minus m minus 2, more than 0. 
So what do I get? 1 minus 1 and minus 2. I will get m minus 2 and m plus 1 more than 0. So this is a quadratic equality. Mark. So what you need to do is just draw this happy face. I have negative 1 and 2. More than 0 means you shade the outside. So my answer is m is less than negative 1 or m is 2. Okay. Sometimes you need to check the question. Huh? You see what I did? You see over here? What they say, m cannot be negative 2. Look over here. Your a must be, cannot be 0, right? Agree not? Because if it becomes a 0, 0x zero squared means that your whole thing becomes a linear equation. If it's a linear equation, it's impossible to have two roots, agree not? Okay, so other than this condition, then you have to take note that, oh, because my a uh, got m involved, so I need to take note that my m plus 2 cannot be 0. So my m cannot be negative 2. So this is an additional condition that you need to take note as well. So my answer should be this and m cannot be negative 2. Okay, this should be the answer. Huh? Okay, this is question 2. Okay, find the range of values of P for which the line has does not intersect the curve. So now this time now is A. This is not a quadratic equation. They actually extend the discriminant thing to a line and a curve. Okay, so uh, I'm not so sure whether uh, you all know. Uh, actually, when you're solving quadratic equation, do you know what you're doing? Okay, when we are solving AX squared plus BX plus C equals to zero. Actually, what we are trying to do is we are trying to solve for Y equals to AX squared plus BX plus C, which is the curve, quadratic curve, against the x-axis, which is y equals to zero. This is like equation one. This is the curve. This is like equation two. So this is actually the curve, and this is actually the line. It's just that students always solve quadratic equation. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. So actually, it is like oh, drawing a quadratic graph, okay, which is uh, for this case, a happy face, against the x-axis, and this is the intersection point. Okay, so when you're solving a quadratic equation, you're actually trying to find where your curve cut the x axis. You understand? Okay, a lot of students don't know, they just solve blindly. Okay, then after that, actually, they extend this uh, theory to a line and a curve. So this is the line. So I usually will put line y equals to 12x minus 2p. So this is my equation one. Then I have my curve, which is y equals to p plus 3x squared, this is my equation 2. Then you see, when this one, uh, we are, what we are trying to do is we uh, solve simultaneous. Uh, and because both are y, y, you will say this equals to 0. And that's why we end up having a quadratic equation. So same apply for a line and a curve. So what you need to do is do simultaneous. So when you do simultaneous, you will say, oh, since actually both sides already one, right? Very straightforward. So straight away, you will say uh, 12. I will put the other side here. So I will say, oh, so p plus 3x squared is equal to 12x minus 2p. So this is supposed to be my quadratic equation. I just need to shift a bit, right? So I'm not going to shift this. I'm not going to open up this one uh, because later this one is actually my a already. So p plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 2p equals to 0. Then I don't need to shift anything anymore because I straight away know my a for this case is p plus 3. My b for this case is minus 12. My c for this case is 2p. Okay, then after that, you will say, oh, okay. So since they tell me that it does not intersect, it's trying to sell you a curve and a line does not intersect. If it does not intersect, means what? It does not have any roots, what? Correct? Not? So it means that my discriminant is less than zero. Okay, maybe I have to I always do this. Huh? So they say does not intersect. So my keyword is does not intersect. That's why my b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So based on that, my b squared minus 4 a c is less than zero. Then we try to solve this. So this will be one four four. This will be minus eight p square. This will be minus twelve twenty four p, and then less than zero. So I have minus eight p square minus twenty four p plus one four four less than zero. Do you see that? Okay, let's see whether I can divide by eight or not. Yes, I can. And, but see, there's a minus, right? And it's inequality. So I'm going to divide by negative 8. So this one becomes P squared plus 3P minus 18. Change the mouth more than 0. Then after that, solve this quadratic. So 1, 3, and negative 18 will give me 
t minus 3, p plus 6, more than 0. More than 0, so draw a heavy face first, or have minus 6 and 3. More than 0 means you shade here. So you have p less than minus 6, or p more than 3. Okay? P less than minus 3 and P more than 3. So you see, uh, this one, remember just now we mentioned that we don't want the P plus 3 to be. So you have to put here, P plus 3 cannot be 0. So my P cannot be minus 3. So in this question, do you notice that, uh, why is it that they never put here? Because in this range itself, this range itself, uh, minus 6, this direction, 3, this direction. Where is your minus 3? Your minus 3 is here, right? So in the first place, your minus 3 is already not in this range. So you don't have to highlight that P cannot be negative 3. You understand? Only, you only need to highlight when the things that it cannot be is inside the range in here. Okay? But of course, you can do a double check and put it here. Lah. So I do a double check with this. Ah, I know that um, P cannot be minus 3 and it's not in this range. So I don't have to bother to write that. So I will only need to write this and this as the answer. You understand? Okay, so this is for question three. Okay. Okay, the curve does not intersect the x axis and it has a minimum point. But I will find the range of value. First, the mention minimum point. So, minimum point is a happy face or sad face. This is a minimum, this is a maximum. So, when they talk about a minimum, that means it's this one. So this is a happy face. And when you know it's a happy face, it means what? It means the A is more than zero, right? For set face, the A is less than zero. So first of all, they tell me it's minimum. So I know my A is more than zero. And when you come to here, A more than zero means what? So since you know that you will, this is how you write, huh? you will say minimum point. So I know my A is more than zero. And then so in this case, my A is K minus six. So you will know that your K minus six is more than zero. In other words, you know your K must be more than six. So this is the first criteria, okay? Okay, just write that for your first information. Second is they say it does not intersect x axis. So remember my x axis just now I mentioned is y equals to zero, ma. So it means that they're trying to tell you that this one, k minus six x squared minus eight x plus k equals to zero. Because when we do simultaneous, we let it equals to zero. And they say that it does not intersect, means that no roots, right? So I say, yeah, follow their words. I will say does not intersect. So our discriminant is less than zero. So B square, B square minus four A C less than zero. So I have 64 minus four K plus 24. Oops, I forget my K. So put here square and K less than zero. So I have minus 4k squared plus 24k plus 64 less than zero. Then what do I do? Any suggestion? Sorry, I always ask, like to ask questions during the teaching. Lab. It's just to make sure that you all understand and you all really learn. So what should I do for the next step? This is a set phase. Do I just proceed? Divide by negative four. Good. Well done. So I'm going to divide by negative four. Divide by negative four. So I have four. A okay, so got four. So I will have k square minus six k six k plus sixteen. Um, remember to change the mouth to more than zero. Okay. So let's factorize this. One minus six and sixteen. Oh, -oh. this is. Did I do wrongly? Oh, no wonder I cannot get it. That's an error. Okay, I never changed my plus to minus, right? Uh, that's why I get a funny number. So this one's supposed to be minus 16. Negative 16. Okay, now it makes sense. Now I have K minus 8. I have K plus 2, more than 0. So draw the happy face. And then I have minus 2 and 8. This side and this side. So k is less than negative 2 or k is more than 8. So just now over here, you see here, k is more than 6, right? So you see this one, ah, but right actually I have two inequality. It's just that a lot of students stop here. 
then they will put these two answers. You understand? So remember just how we put this, when it's a minimum, my A is more than zero. So I know my K minus six must be more than zero. I already have first condition. This is my first condition already. K more than six. I can tell you nice students don't know this part. They always skip this portion. They don't know this portion. So first condition is this. So if I'm going to draw the number line, so I have minus two and eight, which is this and this. And then after that, I have a first condition, which is K is more than six. I come back to here. Six is here. Then I have here. So technically speaking, where's the region where we, whereby we fulfill both? It's only this one, right? So that's why the answer is only K more than eight. And they totally don't have the K less than my 34. Okay, so take note now. Nah. These are just some hidden things that students always miss out. If I extend under 12, 15, okay now, because I still want to talk about partial fraction. Ma. Yes, can extend. If no, cannot extend, then I skip the last two questions and go to partial fraction. Can I? Uh? Claudia can? Okay, good. Okay, question five. Five, the range of values of K for which the expression blah, blah, blah is always positive. Okay, if you notice, a lot of time, always come out with the kind of question, always positive or always negative, okay? Uh, but if they come out always positive, our students will get it correct. Eh, no, no, no. Eh, can, 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 okay. So they come out always negative, then student got it correct. But when they come out always positive, student always got it wrong. Why? Because always positive discriminant is less than zero. Actually, both cases, huh? you have to take note when they say always positive, or when they say always negative, both situations are uh, discriminant is less than zero. So why is that so? You need to know that always positive simply means that your graph is above the axis. Always negative means the graph is below the axis. And both situations, does it cut the axis? It does not cut. And when it does not cut the axis, it means that there's no roots. And when there's no roots, it means that discriminant is less than zero. That's why both situations, discriminant is less than zero. Then what is the difference? The, the difference is when it's always positive, it's a happy face. When it's a, uh, uh, always negative, it is a sad face. So my A is less than zero. So you need to take note. Nah, this is a very important. They always test this always positive, always negative. They, when they say always positive, you need to know you have two conditions. First, discriminant is less than zero and it is a happy face where A is more than zero. Okay. Then when they say that it's always negative, you need to know two conditions is Neck, uh, discriminant is less than zero, then there is a set phase whereby the A is less than zero. Okay? A lot of students, uh, the common mistake is right now. Common mistake is always positive. They say, oh, discriminant is more than zero. Oh, always negative, the discriminant less than zero. That's why I say when question come out always negative, they will get it correct because this is what they call a fluke. Right? They guess, ma, because they say it's always negative, they put discriminant less than zero. But the actual reason is not because it's negative. It's because it did not cut. It has no real roots. You understand? So then they come out always positive. Then they will get wrong with it. Now because they put discriminant more than zero, ma, but which is wrong. Ma, you understand? So that's the first common mistake that always students always do. Ah. And then what's the second mistake? Second mistake is, oh, let's say they know that both situation is at discriminant less than zero. Then they always forget the second condition. You understand? They always forget about the second condition. Okay, come, let's take a look at this one. Huh? So first, you know that, oh, they say always positive, then you must always straight away, uh, no, uh, must always first thing, I always tell my student to write, uh, always positive, straight away say, oh, my discriminant is less than zero. Quickly write, happy face, two condition. Okay, then after that, uh, you will go and find out what's your A and B, C. Uh. My A, so of course, this case, I will have to rainbow out first. Uh. I will have kx squared plus 2kx plus 3k minus 4x minus 2. Okay, uh, it's fine to put equals to zero. Huh? Then after that, you will have to rearrange. So kx squared will remain. I put plus x, then put out the common factor. So I have 2k, I have minus 4. 
Then this plus 3k minus 2 will be my C. So I rearrange in the form. So it will be my A will be K. My B will be 2k minus 4. My C will be 3k minus 2. Okay, then I put this first. So you see this one, A more than 0, right? See here? So it means that I must have my K more than 0. So this is the first condition. Second condition, let's do our discriminant less than zero. So discriminant B square, B square minus 4AC less than zero. So I have 4K square minus 8 to 16K plus 16. Wow, this one minus 12K square plus 8K less than zero. So 4k square minus 12, that means it's negative. Wow. Okay, sorry, uh, my 8k square minus 8k plus 16 less than 0. So I'm going to divide by negative 8. So I have k square plus k minus 2 more than 0. Flip the mouth. Let's solve this 1, 1, and negative 2. So I have k minus 1. I have k plus 2. So draw this one. I have minus 2. I have 1. Ta -da, ta -da. So I have k less than negative 2. I have k more than 1. And not forgetting, over here, my k must be more than 0. So this one already out, my correct? So therefore, answer is k more than 1. And that's why answer is k more than 1. Okay, question six, find the range of values of x which satisfy both the inequality, both. So this is something like the simultaneous what I did, right? I think just this one is still quite straightforward. So three plus two x more than five, we'll do one side, x squared plus one over one, less than 13 x over six, put one side. So let's do this one. So this one will be two x more than five minus three, two x more than two, x is more than equals to one. This one cross multiply 6x squared plus 1, 13x. So 6x squared plus 6 minus 13x less than 0. So 6x squared minus 13x plus 6 less than 0. Let's factorize this 6 minus 13 and 6. So I have 2x minus 3. I have 3x minus 2. So this one draw. This one, I have two third and minus and three third. So that means this one is smaller one, the bigger one is here. So this one is this direction, this one is this one. So in this case, this is X is between two third and three over two. So this is, I have to draw two level. Huh? So I have three numbers for this case. I have two third, I have one whole, I have one and a half. Uh, usually I like to write in mixed number. When you write in mixed number, it's easier for you to see what's on the left and the right integer. Huh? So I have this one, this level, this one is this and this. So in the end, the final region is this one that has two lines. So the answer should be x is between one and one and a half. See? Huh? Okay. This is for question six. Okay, we are done with quad function.